Okay, good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming to the Today's Restaurant News Networking Group 11 a.m. meeting. Today is August 25th, 2023. We are a group of restaurant vendors who are here to help each other grow their businesses and also to help any restaurant tours who might have a question or a concern. Uh, we're here to help them, and we've got years of experience within the group. If you'd like to reach us, give us a call at 561-620-8888 or go to our website at trnusa.com and also go to our YouTube page to see the meetings that you might have missed at uh, YouTube is uh, today's restaurant. And if you are a member of this group, you should have uh, friended me on Facebook so that you could become a member of the Facebook private page for this group, where we do post some information during the week, as well as the video of the meeting. I want to introduce Andre Kochurin. I'm sure you got it right. You got it right, Howard. Okay, so welcome aboard. Uh, Thank you. Tell us who you are, what you do real quick, and then... Uh, We'll circle back to you later. Yeah, absolutely. So really quick, I'm Andre Kaltring. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm a restaurant consultant here based outside of Orlando. Uh, 20 years in the industry, uh, most of it work for Disney. Recently ventured out on my, on my own and started a consulting firm, working with a team of former Disney leaders as well. And we are focusing on specifically management and employee training with the goal of reducing the turnover, which everybody knows we are in in crisis right now so that's kind of um you know briefly about what i do okay great we'll get in more involved with it in a little while but Thank uh you. i want to introduce our one of our members darren gull from tracy.net who uh is going to give us a presentation this morning on his proper in his, on his products and what his company does Darren, the floor is yours, and I've already given you the uh Okay, very chair. good. Good morning, everybody. Darren Gall with Tracy.net. Uh, my goal isn't to bore you with a presentation on my company. I want to talk with you about a hot topic that's out there right now, and it's the topic that uh, we're going to talk about is do restaurants really need house phones? And Howard had found an article mm -hmm. last week that he thought was very pertinent in that and uh, something that I want to open some discussion on and go over. I did some further research above and beyond the article, and that's what we're going to discuss today. So reports indicate restaurants are ditching house telephones is, is what the article subject was on. And it talks about the rise of uh, reservation apps and restaurants are trying to minimize the effect of being deluged with patrons calling to book tables and forcing everybody to use a reservation app like open table or whatever they happen to choose. And so now they're finding that patrons are actually trying to reach out to them through SMS on their cell phones, direct messaging them through the, uh, things like uh, uh, Instagram and just trying to, to get away and trying to determine is it really worth the uh, expense of phones anymore. So reservation apps are reinforcing that tables are harder to get. So they tend to hold a few tables and reserve a lot of restaurants. And that's what patrons are hoping on. And that's what they're trying to bypass when they're doing it. So again, going into the fact that they're trying to find out how do I get it if they don't have a phone line, how am I able to book a table if it shows they're full that night that I want to book my reservation. Uh, without out house phones, as I said, the patrons are asking to get the contact numbers. They're saying, hey, can you give me your cell phone number? So if I want to you know, book or uh, have a way to get a hold of you. So it, it's becoming uh, something that's a very dangerous, slippery slope when you start giving out your direct cell phone number. Uh, owners and managers are complaining. The main reason they want to get rid of the phones is, A, they become very expensive. If you have a traditional analog line, currently AT&T in South Florida is charging over $100 a month for a single analog line. Comcast, if you add it onto your Comcast bill, it starts at $59 a line. So it's not cheap to have a, a phone line anymore. I mean, so these are lines that used to sell in the $25 to $35 range. So you look at where that cost is, and it's it's crazy. Um again, talk about the cost of landlines going up. So what I want to discuss today, is it the best strategy to completely eliminate a phone line? And this is a, 
what I, I found a person in the industry talked about saying is not being able to call a restaurant means cutting back on certain hospitality that used to be commonplace. It's people complain that we're letting technology replace humans. And if you don't have that human touch, you know, how does that affect your clientele? Uh, customers can't call a restaurant and say, hey, I'm running late. I've got a you know 7 p.m. reservation and I'm not going to get there until 7.15. Oh my gosh, you're going to give my table away. How do I let them know I'm running late? Certain populations are adverse to using reservation system. I was hoping Jeff Krantz would be here because I know he is adamant about he wants to talk to people live. <laughs> right. So it's like, how do I confirm my reservation? How do you change your reservation? You know, it's not always easy to do that inside of an app. Also, if you're making a very specific reservation, uh, I know when my in-laws had their uh, 60th wedding anniversary, you know, we had very specific needs. You know, we have a few people that had walkers we had to accommodate for. We had to have a table, you know, on an endpoint so we weren't in the way of other people. Certain dietary restrictions, things like that you want to talk to somebody about ahead of time. And it's obviously a lot easier to pick up the phone and make that change than it is trying to type all that into an app window. And since the pandemic, uh, many customers feel, you know, the industry has become a lot colder, less personal, and letting technology take over in everything that they're doing. So here's a couple things that I found from certain restaurants, which I thought was rather pertinent to that. Uh, th this is a restaurant in New Orleans that says, if I can't give my customers uh, on the phone and talk to them, there's nothing better. You know, they want to talk to the people as much as I love open table uh, and it's helped us get online reservations. It doesn't replace that phone call. Uh, uh, here's a pizza shop that says, despite the evolution of online ordering, phone systems are far from obsolete. In fact, they too are getting more advanced. And that's what we do. That's what Tracy.net does is a phone isn't a phone anymore. It can handle the SMS, it can handle the chat, it can handle tie-ins to your social media. So you can take it to a very advanced function if that's something you wanna do, but also people can call the phone number and speak to somebody. This is found very fascinating. You, know, you look at pizza restaurants and they the money that they have spent to handle online orders, with all that said and done, Domino's is saying almost 40% of their orders are still coming in over the phone. Now, obviously, 60% is a tremendous amount through the online app, but you're, are you really going to walk away from 40% of your business? And that was something that was found. And so Domino's also wants to maintain that human connection. So now what I want to do is actually spark conversation amongst you guys and what are your thoughts based on the evidence you're hearing feel free to just chime in and let's talk this through uh, do restaurants phone lines anymore what are what are people's opinions don't be shy <laughs> <laughs> I would say yes I think that they need the phone lines just like we need customer service lines I mean this whole trying not to have people, we're all missing that connection. And to me, I think they try and, and get away with us just, you know, not being, uh, having these conversations and it just doesn't work no matter what industry. You need to still have people be able to pick up the phone and have a conversation. Terry Art, go ahead. <laughs> I think by not having a direct line to your phone restaurant, you lose a chance in upsell. That's one thing I think restaurants don't focus on enough. Once you got somebody on the line, they're too busy with the everyday operations to just go, hey, I need to get off this floor as quickly as possible. You have a potential customer that is coming in your store, may have never been there before. Want to know if they have craft beer? Want to know if they have this certain food item? Train them to upsell and get those customers in the door and win them over. 100%. Um, so uh, my thoughts on that, on the, uh, the apps and things like that, I think they're great to a point, but when you have somebody like as a customer, um, when you have somebody that actually talks to you and you feel you're getting listened to, that makes a huge difference in any business. Um, and with the struggles of the restaurants, I think that's probably one of the most important things is I'm going to remember this person because they treated me so well. You know, uh, if I don't mind, I'll jump in also. I think there's also a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of restaurants and organizations trying to choose either or, right? Uh, I truly believe it should be happy 
it should be harmony between those two. You have to have an app, right? You need to target those Gen Zs and the younger generation, right? And some of the uh, baby boomers as well. But you have to have that human touch. I always said, the most human company wins, right? It should be a really happy marriage of both because I, you know, I, I'm actually in many uh, different groups and I hear loud and clear from many consumers as well as actual restaurant owners that, you know, losing that human connection is really hurting the industry. So um, I believe it should be both. Ellen, you have your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to say, what about getting a VoIP line? Does that work? For that yeah, you know, hundred percent. Yeah, that, we'll get into my what our solution is, how we address that okay. for the lower cost saving after. Is that's really more into the discussion right now of pros and cons of having a phone line. Okay. Because one one of the big complaints from the owners is nobody they don't have enough staff to answer the phones. So it's like you know the phones are just ringing and ringing and ringing, and yes. no one wants to pick it up and answer it, and it takes away from their time at the table with the customer. You right. know, so that is a complaint. So they're understaffed to take care of their own yeah. business. Yep. Yeah. Chris. Obviously, I have an opinion here. Fire away. Yeah. Number one. <laughs> You've always got great opinions, Chris. <laughs> number one. Here's the dirty little secret about the reservation apps. Uh, a lot of restaurants are about X amount of tables to allow those apps to manage for them, but they still have seating available. The only way you're going to ever know that is to have a phone to be able to call to talk to the restaurant. Okay. Those apps can't manage 100% manage your 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 wait list uh, or your reservations. At least I've never seen one of that sophisticated. Number one, number two, everything in the restaurant doesn't revolve around reservations in the front of the house. There's a whole back of house operation that requires phone lines to be able to call the plumber, unless everybody's texting their plumber now. I, but I don't know if that kind of you know you got. Repair work has to be done. You have orders that have to be placed. There's a whole host of stuff that goes on in a restaurant that still requires a phone. And this, I don't have enough staff to answer the phone. I'm sorry. Once again, that's a training issue. Phone ringing, your job, responsibility, answer to the phone. Period, end of story. If you don't make it a priority and you don't hold people accountable, they're not going to answer the phone. If you're on your game as a manager or an owner and you're paying attention, you will get people to answer the phone because you make it part of their job. That's me. Don Zaza. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Don Zaza is the stand up. Yeah, I did. Uh, that was a great point. I think that was Chris it was just saying that. Wait, correct? Did I have you have your yeah. name right, yes. Chris? Yes. Yeah, I'm thinking not, not from the customer standpoint, but from the vendor service side of it i deal with a lot of different companies as most of you know janet royal companies kitchen exhaust uh, hood cleaning companies I'm, I'm trying to call a restaurant and schedule a, a kitchen exhaust cleaning quarterly cleaning uh, it's three in the morning uh, janet royal company there's an issue i'm trying to contact someone that yeah phone lines are needed in the restaurants 100 percent. that's what i think the back office point is a really good point because how do you communicate with your suppliers? And a lot of people are saying, well, we're just using our cell phones. But the problem is then you yeah. can't ever turn that off. What happens when you're on vacation, you can leave your cell phone behind, you know, for the for the staff to answer your phone. Yeah, <laughs> if, if, you all you, if all your, you, you, you know, and yeah. that's a very myopic way of viewing things because that's somebody thinking in terms of what I can call out when I need to place a call, but how do people get a hold of you? Yep. And there needs to be a central number that everybody can reach, not individual phones of individual managers or owners. You know. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, I just, Darren, I wanted to say the whole concept of what you were talking about is excellent and superb. But I always believed also that there should be some sort of a visual representation like uh, Zoom or whatever it is so people can actually see who you are. But one of the things that's really missing, and I was at this expo yesterday and I saw it, there are people out there that have a disability that can't hear. And you know, there are phones that have actual amplifiers you can attach to your smartphone. And 
you know, and you can hear just about everything the person is saying or everybody on you know so a lot of these things are not you know also disability uh focus. focus and i think there needs to be a component like that as well 100 percent. in fact my daughter is getting a, a degree right now in human factor psychology because that's what she wants to work on is interface for people with handicaps and uh, yeah. it's it's a huge need right now john you have your hand up again <laughs> john zaza no, I don't. or is that just that's a, okay that's the mistake yeah Fill up. so terry uh, appel i saw you had uh, you were about to speak go for it <laughs> well i wasn't but what i was going to say is that what chris said i made a reservation for sit four people on open table. And when we got there, um, they didn't have the reservation. And I asked the manager, I called the manager and I said, well, we did this on open table and I even printed it out. And he said, I hate to tell you this, but we don't always go with open table. And if somebody calls in, they get the priority. And I, I said, what? why do you have the app if you're not going to honor he said that's open table he said if we get somebody in here with a party of six you're a party of four they called and that's what happened to us we didn't wow have well that's we left. terry that's bad business to be honest. That's, that's really bad business. i know i never go to the restaurant again yeah i wouldn't I go didn't. to that restaurant again I that's didn't. that's that pathetic was, yeah you need a phone <laughs> but here's the flip side point. I can give you half a dozen times in the last couple of months where we've tried to make a reservation on Resi, OpenTable, and one of these other platforms, and everything's booked. And then you pick up the phone and you call the restaurant, and they've had a cancellation that OpenTable and Resi don't know about. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or you can Perfect find out example. things like, oh, the the – the tables at the bar are first come first serve. You know, the, 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 these reservation systems can't handle, and they're not handling every circumstance effectively. And here's the other thing everybody needs to know. <clears throat> and as a restaurateur, I always hated this. People will call five restaurants and make a reservation and then decide which one they're gonna go to. Meantime, the other four reservations that they made to the restaurants that they don't go to now have a table tied up with nobody sitting at it. Right. And the only reason way you get around that once again, is you call the restaurant and go, do you have any cancellations? Yeah, we can squeeze you in at such and such time. I don't know how you do that without a phone and a human being trained your number one priority. You hear that, you know, in the old days, it used to be no more than two rings on the phone. You answer the phone within two rings. Right. And I'm sick and tired of this staffing excuse. Yeah. Because the restaurants that treat their people right have no problem being staffed. And the ones that treat their people horribly can't get staffed because of poor working conditions, poor pay, something else. Look at what you're doing. If you've got a staffing problem, look at what you're doing wrong. Right. Very they scary. shouldn't even be Very open. Scary. And that's the ones that close. John Bunn, you patiently have your hand up. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm not in the restaurant industry, as everybody knows. I'm a manufacturer. Um, what we're finding now is that this generation that, that likes the computers and likes the apps and likes everything, they're now finding that they do need the interactions. Um, and I don't think enough people truly understand this. We answer our phones. I refuse to do it during the daytime with a voicemail and the rest of it. And our customers love it because they're building the relationship. We're building a relationship with them. They're building that relationship with us. And humans need the relationship side of things. It's so important, especially in business. So, you know, getting rid of phones, there's no way. Emails are great. They help things. Websites are great email blasts, all this stuff is great, but you got to talk to those customers, build that relationship, because that's what it's all about. Right. Absolutely. Go ahead, Helen. About five years ago, I had just started working at a local restaurant and somebody came in and said, is my order ready from DoorDash? And I said, oh, well, let me see what I can find out because I just started there. 
And I go up to the manager and I said, he has an order from DoorDash. And he said, talking about. So I, he came over to talk to the guy. And I said, you just tell me what it is you want. We'll get you your order together. So I don't know what was happening then. Maybe they've changed their ways, but. You know, I mean, he had something online that showed that he had an order with the restaurant, you know, I don't, pizzas and eggplants and what what have you. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, we could put that together for you. Fine. But we did. We're not dealing with DoorDash. Well, I'm going to wrap this up really quick uh, with uh, okay. my thoughts on the subject. And then, Harv, we can go ahead and go through the group and we can okay. carry on discussion if we'd like. But so yeah. basically coming back to what our thoughts are um, mm -hmm. and the products mm -hmm. we created for restaurants. By not having a published phone number, you could be underserving your customer base. I think that was made loud and clear in our discussions that, you know, if you don't have it, you are not serving your customer base to the fact you should be. Uh, using a cell phone can be overwhelming. I mean, that's what I was discussing. How do you handle, you know, communicating to your suppliers? What happens when you go on vacation? How do you, you know, make sure that, you know, people are getting a hold of you that need to? Um, and also not everybody's comfortable doing things online. I mean, that's a bottom line. I mean, I, I prefer to do it online, but I know it's not the norm. Most people want to pick up and call and talk to people. I love curbside pickup. I love the ability to do it through an app. But um, when there's a problem, I want to have a phone number I can call even with, you know, what I want to do. And um, this is the biggest thing that restaurants saying they're abandoning the phone lines can make it easier on their employees. But as we discussed, you're leaving your diners confused and frustrated. So it's, you know, who, who are you serving? You're not serving your employees. Your employees are servicing your customers. And as Chris said, they need to be trained properly that the phone is one of the tools that they need to use in interfacing with their customers. And we agree with the cost cutting. I mean, a definitely 100%. I mean, so what we as Tracy did, and this came during the pandemic, is I was trying to support my local businesses that didn't have an online presence. So I would be calling them trying to do a takeout order, and I would get busy signal after busy signal after busy signal. I'd hang up and try another restaurant. So I said, you know, there's got to be a better way. So I got with our engineers and we came up with an inexpensive solution where we can have uh, actual four lines uh, and an additional 10 calls queued in the cloud. That is less than the cost of a single analog line and it includes the phone equipment. So we give them five phones mixed and matched from a desk style phone and also the portable phones you can clip on your belt, put a headset in, you know, be able to answer the phone pretty much anywhere you are in the restaurant. It's all decked based. So there's a single thing to plug in and be up and running. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that we've come up with is the ability to have LTE backup because the problem with VoIP phone systems is if your internet is down, your phones are down. So we have a special device that we can put in behind the router and plug the phone system into that and it will fall over to, AT, uh, to a, an LTE backup that is multi-carrier home. So it's not just you know reliant on AT&T, AT mobile or Verizon, it covers all of them. So it's gonna find where the strongest signal is and make sure those phone calls get through. So there are ways of taking control of it. And then there's a whole total turnkey solution uh, where some restaurant chains are setting up call centers. So they're having all their phones in a VoIP system all tied together to a contact center. So the contact center handles the initial request and in dealing with the customer and then passes them through to the restaurant if they need to speak through to the actual location. Uh, Longhorn Steakhouse is one of the places that does that as well as Texas Roadhouse Grill. Those are two that do that technology. So you, you think you're talking to someone in the restaurant but you're talking to a call center at that first contact but it is a contact center run by the chain. It's not mm -hmm. like an outsourced thing. So that's another way. So when we say phone, you know, phone systems are getting smarter. There's ways to make it easier. You know, if your people are busy, they can be listening to your menu options online. You have an option for directions, you know, they can press that and it tells them how to get to you so they don't have to sit there and have someone explain it to them. So there's many ways that you can do it. So, you know, our, our thoughts are there's that, you know, Having a phone system price isn't an excuse. We have a solution that's $85 that will work for any restaurant to handle their phones. We've done it from high-end restaurants to you know, low-end chains and also retail stores. So that's what we've got to say. Again, my name's Darren with Tracy.net. Uh, 
go backwards here on me. So we want to stay at the center of people's uh, solutions. We take the stress out of your communications needs, and that's my contact information. So anybody you know who's struggling with this decision, we can help them through it. Uh, we do a full consultative approach. We work with all the carriers as well as our own platform. So we ensure that people get a price within their budget and a solution that meets their needs. And in most cases, it's it. yeah. And how are we going to give it back to yeah. you? Could I just ask one question? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I found that organ that company that I just spoke to you about. It's called the Center for Hearing and Communication. Rhonda <laughs> Banker. She's the. So we can send him. We a can package. send this to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Be an amplifier on that as well. So people. Yeah, there's a, there's that. amplifier solutions. There's also text options. Um, you know, we also do. We sell Zoom. You know, we sell. Uh, you know, those online platforms where you can do a face to face. And a lot of the services we have have real-time transcription here. And so as you're talking, it's literally transcribing the call. So you could answer it on a computer versus on a phone. And right. the transcription, you don't even have to uh, you know, talk about it. It's completely transcribed in real time. The beautiful, one of the good uses of AI. John, you had another question? Uh, yes, John I Bob? do. Thank you. Um, yeah. Old school, we tried the, the, the old VOI with things and mm -hmm. the phone systems um, were lacking a lot of the new features maybe go over some of the new features that are different and help because like they you couldn't pick a phone up or a call from a different phone and, and a lot of people i know don't like that kind of a scenario yeah. and so you may want to touch on that just a little bit to help sure sure so um a voip system isn't lines you know it's it's extension um, we do have a workaround for that. In fact, the restaurant option I mentioned at the $85, we do it as a line one, line two, line three, line four. So you can put it on hold and pick it up on any phone. So that's that's a way that we can address that functionality. For the full blown where you've got like multi-tenant, you know, where you've got 10, 20, 30, you know, people working, we can do what's called a park button. And what a park button is, it appears like a line button on your phone. So when you park that call, there's a light that lights up on all the other handsets. That's the park button. And they can press that button and pick it up. Mm -hmm. So you're 100% right that you know it's a, there's a transition from going from an analog system to a digital system. But you can do workarounds to make a, a, a you know a digital system you know look like and work like an analog system. So again, that's part of our consulting approach is you got to find out what the customer's desires are. We don't come in and say, here's what you need. We listen to what the problem is, identify what they need and design the system to meet their needs. There's no worse case than going in and here's your options, A, B, C, or D. <laughs> you know, How many of us can define our business as A, B, C, or D? Nobody. So it's our job to get to the bottom of what the true need and, and concerns of the customer are and build a system that meets their needs. Darren, I know you have to run. Uh, yeah, any... I'm good till 12. I'm good oh, till 12. 12. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, have to, I have to be, I have to be at a meeting at 1230. So I'm okay, good. Till 12. good. <laughs> I'm going to sit back and relax. <laughs> So I appreciate everybody's uh, contribution to this subject. It is obviously a passion of ours to solve problems and phone systems don't have to be replaced. They just have to be updated. And uh, the, there's ways that you can do it without any upfront capital. All of our services just about can include a free phone. Uh, so there's definitely a way to get it done very affordably. And you're just paying a monthly fee, uh, you know, and into the, like, you know, uh, you know, what Rob and Helen said about the, the concern about you know, for, uh, transcription, that is definitely something that we have through some of the carriers we do. And that would be something as we identified, if that's something they want to be able to handle, we can 100% implement a solution that does the transcription. Well, Darren, I want to thank you very much for a very informative and informational presentation. Uh, Happy to do it. Nice uh, job, Darren. Thank you. Yeah, great. Uh, as always. <laughs> I, I, and the again, conversation I, has been great. Yeah. You, you want to say something, Terry? No, I just want to say the conversation is also very helpful um, from all of, I, I would say from my aspect as I'm learning the different inner, inner workings within the restaurant business Yeah. as well. Right. Uh, and I, I, anybody in the group who would like to do a presentation, uh, Please let me know. Uh, I 
uh, can schedule you. And, you know, as new members come in, I will uh, ask them to do it. But if anybody existing would like to do it, please let me know. I think it's important to do presentations because that's how people get to know you. Uh, you. You know, when you're doing our little commercials, it's kind of hard to fully sum up what we do. And, you know, it's, I think, important any chance you get to get to know people. And a lot of times when I do my presentation, this wasn't done as a presentation of Tracy as much as a, a discussion form mm -hmm. on a thing, but I mm -hmm. talk about myself personally as well, mm -hmm. because I think people do business with people they trust. And the more we know and get to know each other, the more we're going to refer business to each other. Absolutely. You, it's amazing that if, if we spent a, a whole meeting talking about uh, something that you might have done in your life that brought you to where you are today, you would find out so much about the people in the group that you might have in common with them, or you might say, wow, that, that's something, uh, because we all didn't come here on a straight line. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Especially since we're not all like right out of college or something. Right, for sure. I, I can give you a full hour of my life, but I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Anyway, uh, Darren, again, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to do our intros now. Uh, Andre, don't worry about writing down everything, because at the end of the meeting, I will send an, an, a, a spreadsheet with everybody's contact information. I want to, uh, John Marinick, you with us? I was going to start with, if he's here, John, you're on mute. You're going from far east to west on your introduction there? Yeah, he, he's, <laughs> he's, John, there we go. No, that's not him. <laughs> well, anyway, let's start with uh, the three amigos who are here today. Let's start yes. with uh, John, Chris, and, Ke and Kevin. Keith. Morning, everybody. So, y'all, y'all have heard it a million times. We are strategic supply chain partners. Uh, we save restaurant companies money. I'm, I'm not going to do our elevator pitch because I want to share a story. We're uh, in the process of onboarding and RFPing several new clients uh, right now. Uh, I just crunched a bunch of numbers for two of them yesterday, and I have to point out, nobody's going to believe what I'm about to say. One of these customers. Their current average case cost on a, what's called a descending dollar report, report, which is weighted for number of cases purchased times the cost they're paying. And then you get a total for all purchases for a period of time. This company is at $124 and change average case cost. And the first bid that we got in RFP in their business trying to reduce their cost came back at $79. <laughs> Um, Holy we cow. save people absurd amounts of money. And here's the deal. We've said it a million times. People don't know what they don't know. These people are so hung up on one product that they have told the vendor, got to have it done a certain way. Got to be this, got to be that, got to be the other thing. Where they can't get it anywhere else. So guess what? The vendor can charge them through the nose for the product that they're all hung up on. And it just doesn't need to be that way. We're going to present them at least five different options to reduce cost. But this is a $44 a case safe. It's absurd. This is 37%. It's $38 a case, and a new proposal is $65 a case. It's $33 a case. That's a 30% reduction. I've never seen anything like it. The other company we're RFPing, they are $15 lower on an $80 average case cost. These are real numbers. This is real life. This is what really happens in this business. We can save people money all day long. And it's, we're just here to help. So anyway, strategic supply chain partners, we are an outsourced purchasing department. We absolutely lower our clients' costs. We save them money. Uh, one of our, our largest clients, we've saved them enough money in the last 15 years to build an entire restaurant out of cash. Kevin, you want to add anything to that, bud? I just add, Chris, great, great discoveries that we're finding as we're doing this every time. And uh, certainly the two examples today were 
for us, even having seen this many, many times in the past, absolutely eye eye opening. Uh, what's I happening? I finished these two reports last night. I was in shock and disbelief. I had to go back and read check all my numbers and I sent it to all the other partners that please look at this stuff. This is too good to be true. But I know my, my numbers are right. And there's so much money on the table if people would just get some help. Yeah. And, and, and that's even what you're saying. Excuse me. Sorry. Who's, who oh, no. said something? No, no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that the, the other part of what we do is everything that we do is based on a contingency relationship. So we basically share in the savings we find our clients. There's no upfront costs, no fees, uh, no retainers, no project costs. We just come in, we find the savings, and we share in the savings. Uh, if we can't find savings, we did a lot of work for free. Just validating that your programs are in place and, and very productive for your company. Uh, oh, but, yeah, but at this point, I can, based on Chris's comments, you can see what is potentially out there. And, it, and it's really, you know, COVID created a, a firestorm in the industry. And, and unfortunately, in some cases, there's, there's ignorance, but there's also people taking advantage of, of, of customers, the distributors, manufacturers, and so on. So we're able to kind of clean that up, look at it, dissect it, and re renegotiate the way somebody is out buying what they buy and saving them crap loads of money. I like that story. Mm -hmm. I would like to see one good reason why you wouldn't at least let these guys price these food items out for you. How much do you charge for that, Kevin and Chris? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You knew that. Just look at it. <laughs> and, John, you know, we worked for months on client accounts that never signed us up. Yep. I, I can tell and you why they, they, don't they, they don't call you. They don't call you. It's called pride. People yes. think they know the, the best way to do everything. Uh, and I've seen that in the restaurant industry, that yeah. people really yeah. think that they know what they're doing on all aspects and are uh, they don't want to ask for help because, again, it's like they don't want to know what they don't know. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Darren, you couldn't have said it better. You know, what's, what's the old saying? Don't, re uh, uh, don't try to make a better mousetrap. Most restaurateurs think they have the best mousetrap. And the fact of the matter is they're all really stuck in the same mousetrap and not knowing what they don't know. There's so much money being left on the table. It's, it's criminal. It is it's criminal. For sure. Well, you, you said it was a dis distributor felony. <laughs> all right. I'm going to move along guys, because we got to get everybody in before 12. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Terry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Terry. Ark. I, on creative business impressions. I am a promotional products distributor. I have been in the industry for 20 years this year. I uh, started my own company in 2018. Um, so I am the person that you would call to uh, provide product for you that would have your company logo on. Um, I found one of my favorite products uh, in, in some of my samples this morning. Um, uh, everybody, everybody in on a daily basis, we'll probably, well, maybe a weekly basis, we'll probably use a cutting board. Um, great little product that I found that uh, is in our industry. It's called uh, Chop Top. And they, uh, it's a cutting board uh, made yeah. of silicone and you can fold it up and pour it right in your small bowl. I have two of those. <laughs> I love them. I love them. Uh, so again, Terry Ark, uh, Creative Business Impressions. My phone number is 561-308-1393. Email, uh, uh, my other information is in the chat, but my email address is terry.ark at outlook.com. Okay, thank you. Gabby, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Gabby from Workside PEO. We are a full service PEO uh, specializing on the restaurant industry. Uh, what that means is uh, similarly to the three amigos, we specialize in saving uh, the restaurant's money and being able to bring back capital. Uh, we do so by taking care of the entire back office, keeping their employees happy, and also processing tax credits in order for them to bring capital back into the restaurants. Um, from the HR back office, we'll take care of payroll, payroll taxes, workers comp, employee health benefits, and 401k. And using the economy of scales to be able to offer them better rates than they will get in a regular brokerage. 
Um, my name is Gabby, as I said, and I'm with Works IPO 561 479 7474. Thank you. Thank you. I saw John Marinek on for a second. Are you with us, John? I want to try to get him on because we know he's out of the country. And I, I sent him an email and asked him to uh, unmute and come on. I don't know that he got it. Well, he, his picture came up for a second. Anyhow, Terry Lima, good morning. Good morning. Terry Lena, workwear outfitters. We manufacture workwear apparel that's innovative. Uh, we're basically a solution for your uniform program. I work with you from product selection all the way through to finding you the best distributor that's going to fit your needs. You can reach me at 720-244-4972. Thank you. Thank you. John McCabe, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm John McCabe. I'm with Carpet Johnny. We're a large manufacturer of ice cream, gelato, and pastry equipment, and we also distribute ESA display cases. Howard, thank you very much for the email this week. I'm sorry to hear and report that uh, there was a uh, major mistake made out by an ice cream company uh, shop out in Washington, and they didn't clean their machines, and three people died. And it's not good for our industry at all. It's something that it wasn't our equipment, but we don't like that to happen to anybody at this point. Um, for your customers, we have videos on cleaning up machines. And one of the things Carper Johnny has done is we've come up with heat treatment, which that generally in the middle of the night will take a two to three hour period and it will pasteurize your uh, mix in your machine so that you start with clean product every morning when you open up. Uh, we're finding that to be more and more popular. Primarily, we started by the idea of saving money on labor and cleaning, and uh, cleaning, same thing on labor, on your shrinkage of throwing out the mix, your lubrication, and lost parts. But the main thing is you want to make sure you're serving safe, clean product for your customers because, uh, first of all, you don't want them to get sick, but second of all, you can really kill your business if, if it, uh, if something like this happens. So we're really on top of this and we're starting to really uh, get involved with the heat treatment part of it. And if any of your customers, you know, need cleaning instructions or help for cleaning their, their ice cream machines, we have videos available and they can generally be applied not only to Carpet Johnny, but to other companies too. The theory is kind of about the same and we're more than happy to help them with that. I can be reached at John M at Carpet Johnny dash usa.com uh thank you very much have a great weekend okay and uh john will be at the florida restaurant lodging show uh yes, among sir. other among other people here in the group so uh <laughs> gabby you're going to be there too we have a booth so if anybody wants to come crash uh let me know um I believe I have tickets. I will let you guys know next time. Okay, I'm gonna talk By to the you. Way, I won't. I won't be here next week or the following one. I'll, I'll be on vacation. No, it's not. It's no excuse. John is in somewhere in Pakistan, and he's still on the. Uh, I want to talk to you before be, you before you leave today. Be, I want to talk to you. I'm gonna be in the cruise in the middle of the water in the middle of nowhere, so I won't be. Oh. <laughs> have fun uh let's go to Matt, john marinette because i'm not sure you still out of the country uh i i i'm still out of the country but i will be back in tomorrow i i've just been waiting on a flight that's all um they can't they canceled a couple flights out of jfk anyway um John Marinick, Marinick Food Service Consultants. We design restaurants, and um, if you need a restaurant to design, we're the people to use. And 954-817-1183. Uh, I'm going to hope this connection stays. Thanks. Okay. Uh, John Bung, good morning. Uh, good morning. John is also going to be at the Florida <laughs> Restaurant Show, and he okay. took a booth right next door to us. Okay. Yes, oh, that's great. It should be fun. Uh, everybody come stop by. We'll have extra chairs and things. 
Uh, my name is John Bunn. I'm with the BH Bunn Company. As you can see behind me, we use a machine that ties boxes with twine, newspapers, magazines, literally anything you can think of. We've been in the baking industry since the 1930s, tying up bakery boxes. Most people realize once they see the machine and what it does that they've been around it all their life and they carry the boxes home by the twine. It's been our machine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, literally anything you can think of, again, we tie. Uh, we're here to help restaurants secure their packages for third-party deliveries. Um, as Darren said the other day, it's better to be tied than tried. Uh, I love that phrase. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so true. Uh, nearly 80% of the delivery drivers today admit to eating the food they deliver. And all the customers asked, over 85% want some sort of tamper-proof system. The bun knot cannot be duplicated by hand, yet no knives, no scissors to remove it. It's very simple. Um, you can call me at 1-800-222-BUN. My website is buntyco.com and my email is info at buntyco.com. How far is your factory from the convention? Uh, we're in Lakeland, so we're about 35 miles, maybe 40. About 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay. I actually uh, still have the original number one bun from 1907. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Pam, good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, awesome. <laughs> this is Pamela Hewitt. I know I, I kind of thought, you know, maybe I did something wrong. So y'all were just like kind of punishing me and putting me on mute. No. But anyway, good to I uh, happy. Happy, I know. Happy Friday, everyone. Pamela Hewitt. I'm with Novitas Credit, and we're a national company and in Canada, uh, owned by a large bank as well. And we, I work with vendors and companies to uh, help them finance any type of equipment, working capital, and soft costs. We also are owned by uh, United Community Bank, based out of South Carolina, which is a very a strong bank. So we offer SBA loans for startup restaurants and businesses as well. And so we have some programs available that your standard lender doesn't have. For example, we can offer a startup loan to a restaurant that has, you know, the brand new startup for $35,000 at reasonable rates versus, you know, those high online rates. Actually, this week I'm finalizing a deal. Uh, for 35000 for a company that they, they don't even have their property yet. So just keep us in mind if you're out in the field and, you know, you see people that, you know, are building, expanding, or need financing for equipment, we, you know, I and we can uh, assist with all of that. My phone number direct is 813-531-0654. And I'm not going to attempt to try to say the email, but it will be on the list. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have a great Friday. Okay, thank you. John Zazo, you with us? I'm back, Jack. All right, give us your <laughs> intro. Uh, before I do, real quick, I did some quick checking. I had to scoot off for 20 minutes there. Okay. Um, going back to that last phone line, okay. landline restaurant discussion. Um, NFPA, National Fire Protection Agency, and, and a lot of fire fire codes and fire stations, it's mandated they need you need phone lines for for fire for monitoring uh, in in restaurants. So uh, just the thought I'd let you know that. I, uh... That's terrific. Yeah, okay. I wondered about that because when somebody places a call, they know exactly where it is. If you don't have a phone line and you have a fire, you got to wait for someone to call. Oh. Um, yeah, it, it, I don't think there's a choice for restaurants. Is that you, you have to mandate it again by by law. You need to monitor fire systems and alarm systems by a line. So yeah. anyway, for what it's worth, I thought I'd share that with everybody. Yeah, John, I, I we actually do have a solution that replaces that. It's called a, a, a SIP POTS replacement line that is certified for fire and alarm lines. So okay, and good. they're fully good monitored and et cetera. So we can cut that cost by less than half of what they'd pay for a traditional analog line. Good to know. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, 
So real quick with me, uh, I'm I'm working with a company that uh, that uh, obviously we're involved with TRN. It's called Survey. If you're in front of your computer, you can check it out real quick. It's get g e t dot s r dot v i. Survey is an ordering platform, and we make service faster for restaurants, hotels, resorts, at the patio, on the at the beach, at the pool. You basically there's QR codes. Uh, uh, um, situated all all over at the beach again uh, on the tables and restaurants. You scan it with your phone. You can order with your phone. You pay with your phone. It's not an app. It's a live URL. Uh, the, the, the kitchen gets the ticket. We we're compatible with uh, with those and most other POS systems. We're not a POS system, but we work alongside them. And uh, for restaurants that are having labor issues with staffing issues. We save. Uh, we, we have a couple of restaurants on board that completely got rid of their staff uh, and went 100% with the survey program. So that's uh, survey. Uh, get survey. Get the uh, S E R V I. My number five six one six three three eight zero one D. John Zaza. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Helen and Rob, who are uh, resident uh, food service people. <laughs> there yeah, hi, there. Thank you, there. Go ahead, Ellen. Hi. hi. Uh, we run Delicious Spoonfuls, which is a nonprofit focused on the training and employment of people with special needs, including Down syndrome, autism, in some cases, mental illness. Uh, and, and we're also talking about veterans. We are uh, serving training and employing these people to serve ice cream at our events, whether they be a networking event like we did yesterday or a wedding, an office party, anything you need in the South Florida area, call us. We'd love to talk with you. And I want to just thank Terry, the two Terrys, and John McKay. You've been a tremendous well, three asset, Terrys. especially three Terrys now. <laughs> oh, my God. And they're going to change their names to Terry. Because that's good. And by the way, one more thing I want to just mention. Make sure you get to Rocco's tonight, Taco. Mark Wahlberg will be there. He'll mix good drinks, zingers for all the ladies. Okay. Mark Wahlberg. Wow. He's not with Jenny anymore, is he? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Which Rocco's tacos on, do I have to go to? Andre. Well, okay. Rocco Tacos in Delray. At seven o'clock, Atlantic Avenue. He, he's there to support all the people who lost their homes in in Hawaii in Maui. Okay. All right, Andre. Uh, if if you'd like to, now that you see what we do, if you want to, if you forgot something, or give us give us your uh, give us a way to contact you. Yep. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Liz and Howard. Looks like it's a fantastic group of professional here. So um, I, I feel grateful to you know to be able to join you this morning. Uh, again, my name is Andre Kalchuin. My phone number three two one nine four eight six seven six five, and the website is andrekalchuin.com. Well, we hope you uh, will come back and, and become a member. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Andre, uh, Andre, I'm, I'm Can you chat in a chat? Can you send me your, your cell number, John Zaza? Yes, sir. Thank it's you. good. It'll be on the uh, email that yeah. I send out. Okay. No, okay. Uh, thanks, Howard. I, I thought so. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we again. I'm going to just review. We're going to hold the combined meetings once once a month, at the last Friday of the month, and. Uh, We'll see you all next week. Uh, Gabby, if you have a minute, please hang out. I want to ask you a question. And uh, anybody else wants to hang out, that's fine too. So appreciate I, it. Have I a great weekend. Jumped. I'm sorry. 